So what's going on everybody? Thank you for tuning in to the channel today. Today we're going to talk about all things F450. So are you ready? Let's roll! Hey, what's going on everybody? Thanks again for tuning in to the channel. I really do appreciate it. And if you haven't subscribed, we would love for you to subscribe to our channel. So hit that subscribe button and then tap the bell. And every time we post a video, you will be notified. And as always, please leave us a big thumbs up. That helps RV content get out there in the uh, logarithm. So today, like I said earlier, we are gonna talk about all things F450. This is our F450 behind me. Um, we named it Blackhawk. So if you hear us talk about Blackhawk in our videos, we don't own a helicopter. Uh, maybe someday, but not, no. We don't wanna own a helicopter. This, this is enough maintenance behind us. And with gas prices, Man, who can afford to own a helicopter? <laughs> so before we get going into breaking down the 450, because you know what, it has been our number one video, the most views on our channel. We've gotten a lot of questions and we really do appreciate all those questions. And I'm gonna to get to those today um, about the 450 and uh, how have we liked it, what's been the gas mileage, uh, how have we liked towing with it, things of that nature. We're gonna to get to all that. So um, we made a video that we put out, like I was alluding to earlier, and we did F350 single rear wheel versus F450 dual rear wheel, and which one do I need? Because at the time um, when we purchased our fifth wheel, we purchased a Riverstone Legacy 39 FKTH fifth wheel. It is a toy hauler front kitchen floor plan version. It's 44 feet long, 13 feet, four inches tall. And uh, you know, when all these numbers were being thrown at us, we just couldn't wrap our head around exactly good enough, you know, like what kind of truck we needed to pull that beast. Um, and we're part-time RVers, so we thought, well, we don't want a dually as an everyday driver. Um, so when we went to the dealership, you know, he and along with our little bit of knowledge of the numbers, we ended up all going, ah, you know, we'll be fine with a single rear wheel F-350 Super Duty truck. And long story short with that, um, we just didn't have enough payload capacity um, for the weight that our fifth wheel is and although it could pull it fine stopping power sway power you know uh, in the bed of the truck it was a short bed truck so we had a slider hitch just just lots of things it, it just was not enough truck to pull the fifth wheel so we ended up trading it in after only owning it for I don't even know if it was six months so we kind of paid the price um, for that mistake and not knowing our numbers good enough uh, when we were purchasing and kind of thinking you know that we didn't want something like this as an everyday driver so I know all of us are passionate about trucks I am by no means a professional truck guru um, I'm not a super duty mechanic I'm just a guy who loves trucks and uh, I'm learning about trucks like maybe a lot of you are but I've also come to learn that all of us are really passionate about our trucks and um, whether you're a Dodge guy, a Chevy guy, a GMC guy, a Toyota person, or, or whatever it is. And that's great, because you know what? You should be passionate uh, about your brand. You bought it because you love it. Uh, so um, we happen to be Ford people, and uh, that's what we have. And so we love our Ford. So I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of a background into um, why we ended up with this F450. Okay, so now I want to take a little time to crunch some numbers. Now these are our numbers, but you can make them applicable to your current situation. Uh, whether you're getting ready to purchase a new vehicle um, and an RV, or you already own an RV and you're like, you know, I didn't, I don't think I have enough truck to pull our RV. I would say this, you know, from learning from our mistake, the number one understanding that I wish I would have had was the payload capacity of the truck um, versus the pin weight 
of our fifth wheel. That's the one mistake that we made in, in the number crunching aspect. So for me, um, if I was going to give somebody advice, that's the first thing I would give. Know what the payload capacity of your truck is before you purchase your RV. So um, if I'd have known that number better and really, really understood it, um, we probably wouldn't have bought a single rear wheel F350 to begin with. Um, so the F450 has a payload capacity of 4,711 pounds. And the pin weight of our fifth wheel is 3,950 pounds. So we have like 471 pounds left over, and then you have to include a full tank of gas uh, yourselves and any gear you put in the back seat or maybe you have in the back of the truck. So your payload capacity is a, a super important number to know if you're a fifth wheeler, then you gotta, you know, what is the pin weight of my fifth wheel? And if you're pulling a pull behind or a bumper pull, what is that weight going to be on your hitch? And then once it's on your hitch, what are you throwing in the bed of your truck? Do you have any gear in your crew cab, um, etc.? So it's really important to know those numbers. And like the dry weight of our fifth wheel is 17,726 pounds. And that dry weight means it's just as it sits in the parking lot with none of our gear in it. And then with ours, we can have a gross vehicle weight load of 21,000 pounds. And so that includes the steaks in the freezer, the burger, the hot dogs, uh, all the way back to your, to your clothes. And for us, we have a golf cart that we tow that weighs about 800 pounds itself. So we have to include that. So we're rough left with like 3,273 pounds between the golf cart and any other gear that, that we stow or goes with us in our storage compartment. So you can see where, you know, you can, you can run out of room really fast. The next question we get asked quite frequently is why you chose the F450 over the F350. And number one is we really liked the wide track front axle. And if you've ever, you know, driven or test drove the 350 versus the 450, both great trucks. But I tell you what, when you get the turn radius of this 450, it's almost a, a seller all in of itself. Uh, so it was a wide track front, front axle that was the first thing that sold us. Um, I liked the heavier disc brakes that are on the F450. And then in the front, it does have a heavy duty axle in the front with an extra coil. Um, and then it also came with the commercial grade tires. So those were the things that we really liked about the F450 versus the 350. Although I can tell you this, the F350 does have more payload capacity, roughly, I think it's around 900 pounds more. So it's a give and take, you know, we did give up payload capacity, you know, to get these things. The F450 is just a heavier truck than the F350 is. And again, when you know, you start crunching numbers and every little thing adds weight. Um, even we added some more weight essentially by getting an F450 with a moonroof because that adds more weight to it. So it's, that's that numbers game, you know, but, but those are the reasons why we went with the F450 over the F350. So another question we get asked is how does it pull your fifth wheel? Have you, have you liked that? Well, let me tell you, we have seen an incredible change in the pulling of our fifth wheel by having the F450. Number one, I alluded to the heavier disc brakes. Well, let me tell you, that right there has also been a game changer, the stopping power and just feeling more in command. You know, when you're driving and you're pulling something that big and that heavy, um, we had the opportunity to really put Blackhawk here uh, through, through its paces, we did a drive from Greensboro, North Carolina, all the way up to Prior Lake, Minnesota. So I really got a chance, you know, to see how it did, how it pulled. Um, and man, I tell you what, game changer all the way. So the other thing, you know, having that wider rear end, you know, and those four tires in the back, stability wise too in the back, man, I tell you what, you know, night and day difference. Because I, you know, I talked about earlier about 
sway in the bed and and if you have a single rear wheel truck and you're pulling something kind of heavy you'll understand I mean, you mean as you're driving you just kind of feel that shifting and uh, sometimes even when semi trucks you know are blowing past you you, you just you, you can feel that that rear end just sway a little bit you know and and not that you don't always feel it a little bit when you're passed by a semi truck but i'm talking about the actual swaying of the bed you know when you have that larger footprint wider footprint in the back uh, yeah, it's it's definitely a game changer. The the other thing in the polling department that kind of goes along with it is, you know, I went from a you know six foot bed to the eight foot bed, and we had a slider, you know, in the short bed. And I tell you what, I know the, the sliders are great um, for what they do, but I can tell you this: I don't know if 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 you really ever adjust to that clinking, you know, that you hear when you pull away from a stoplight, <laughs> and then when you stop. At the stoplight, the fifth wheel kind of lunges forward. I think that still always made Chris kind of jump every time that that would happen. So the eight foot bed, love having the eight foot bed. And then we switched hitches and we went with the BW Companion 25,000 pound hitch. That's on a puck system. Uh, as you guys know, if any of you own a slider, like they're really heavy and you know a lot of work if you have to pull them um, out of your truck. So having a puck system. So having the 450, you know, and pulling it has just been a game changer uh, versus the single rear wheel. And yeah, we've just enjoyed it. Um, and then let's talk about gas mileage, because that's another thing uh, people ask us, what kind of gas mileage are you getting? So when we're pulling the fifth wheel and towing it, I noticed uh, on that trip that I alluded to, we ended up getting a, a average about nine miles a gallon. You know, I mean, we went through mountains and stuff, and then you're down in the eights and um, but overall, I'd say we got nine miles to the gallon pulling the fifth wheel. Now, if we're just around town or we're just, you know, running running around with it, you know, on the highway, we probably get about 19 miles to the gallon. So, uh, man, I'll tell you what, you know, gas, it just is what it is, you know. I mean, it's the nature of the beast. You got a big vehicle, you got a big, big truck, and you got to have a big gas tank, and that's all about being a truck owner. So it is what it is. So which trim package do you have? Uh, we have the Platinum trim package, which we really like. Uh, we didn't set out to get the, the Platinum. We actually wanted to get a, the Lariat package, um, but we couldn't find any. <laughs> we couldn't find any uh, Lariats out there. When we purchased this truck, the all the COVID stuff had just started to hit where trucks just, you know, Ford quit, you know, uh, the production. And it was really difficult, you know, to even find this one so we couldn't find a lariat uh but they had the platinum package so we did have to pay a little more for that but you know what? we're glad that we got the platinum package it's been really nice um so the other the other question we get asked is um how does it ride and that's a very good question so you know coming from the single rear wheel f350 into this we had heard things like man the the ride of the f450 and the f350 but not as bad this one though you know was supposed to be the stiffest of the duels and uh so we kind of went and think it was going to feel like we're going to ride on a bunch of bricks you know and so when we got in it and we took a first test drive you know we were bracing ourselves and you know what we were pleasantly surprised that it actually is not as bad as what we thought it was going to be um i'll say this though like in the future if we ever uh, start to full-time rv you know we've talked about maybe putting airbags on it just just to kind of make it a little bit better um, than what it is, but you know what? Really, it's not as bad as what we thought. And you know, Chris, what she loves about the Platinum package, it comes with those massaging seats. So if it starts to feel rough, she just turns on the heat and massage. She's good to go. <laughs> so the other question we get asked uh, too, as well, is what upgrades have you done to it since you've owned it? And we ha haven't done uh, a whole lot to it other than just a couple months ago. Um, but I did tint the front windows and put a tunnel cover on the back and that's that's all we had for quite a while till just recently we upgraded the wheels and tires
Okay, so now I want to talk to you guys about that upgrade of tires and wheels. So we went, there was nothing wrong with our factory tires and wheels. Um, Chris and I both love black vehicles. Her Highlander's black. We purchased a black truck. Uh, we love the blacked out look. Her Highlander's blacked out. So we knew at some point uh, we were going to black out the 450 as well. We were just kind of doing some research out there on wheels and tires and, and kind of what's the best to go with. Um, I'll say this, if you're a 450 owner, um, it is a 10 lug and there's not a lot of wheels out there for, for 10 lugs. So we didn't have a ton of options. Uh, we ended up going with the, the fuel brand and they had two options and we just chose one of those uh, styles that we liked the best. And then we ended up going with the Nitto Ridge Grappler tires, they're 35s. Um, and then we lifted the front end two inches because as you all know, you know, most trucks come with that natural slant. So now the truck just sits level, which I know is probably going to affect our gas mileage, but that's okay. You know, the price you pay. Um, so how does it ride since we've got that? That's, that's another question. How does it ride on those tires and is it noisy? So when we first pulled up to Outlaw to pick it up that day, first of all, I just, man, I couldn't believe the difference in the looks of it, you know, with this, uh, versus what we had with the factory and just so you guys uh, know two rims uh, wheel size I should say we only went up to a 20 inch wheel um, from a 19 and a half to a 20 you can do 22s but if you start doing 22s your tires start getting thinner um, and I didn't want that you know for for weight purposes so uh, noise you know I was expecting to hear some noise and some hum because obviously there there's more of a tire footprint so to speak uh, more of a tread pattern and you know what I was pleasantly surprised that it actually was quieter um, than the tires that came with it from the factory and it was smoother so uh, yeah I mean I was pleasantly surprised with that and the other question that we get asked is how is it towing now and what's that feel like and um, because we're just now coming into spring and we're part-time RVers we have yet to pull um, we haven't taken Big Blue out yet, but we are chomping at the bit to get out there. And so I'll make a future video on that as how did it tow um, with these new tires and wheels on there. So I, I would say if there's a, if you want to say there's a, you know, some downsides to doing an upgrade like that on your truck, you know, number one, I did call Ford and I asked if it was going to avoid our warranty by going, you know, um, with an upgrade like that and they said nope it won't void your warranty so we're still good with with all the warranties but you cannot rotate your tires um, once you get this style on your truck so once they're on they're on and this is a 60,000 mile tire so they will stay that way and they're all at 80 psi so yeah so that'd be you know one of the downsides it's a little bit harder um, to put air in the dualies in the back to get to the second tire than the, the, the factory one that's on there. But those are just some of the downsides that I've noticed uh, since we own it. And if there's any more, I will definitely let you guys know. So as I bring it down to a close here, I forgot one of the upgrades and it's a little upgrade, but we actually went with the custom mud flaps by Duraflap and we have our MK logo in them. So I'll put a link to them below so that you guys can, uh, if you want to check that out and uh, make up your own custom mud flaps. Um, they're, they've been great. Uh, we haven't had any issues with them and I definitely recommend them for a custom mud flap. So with that being said, guys, I really appreciate you uh, tuning in. I hope this has helped. Um, just let you know what we think of the F450. So is it worth it? Is it worth it to have the F450? I say yes. Uh, it's my personal opinion. I'm glad we went with that. I'm glad you have the truck that you have. I hope that you love it. Um, we love it. It has been uh, a big difference for us. We feel safe. Um, we understand, you know, the numbers uh, better now. And, and I hope that this video has helped you with that. If you have any questions, uh, please leave comments uh, below and I'd be happy to answer them. Again, you know, I'm not a professional truck guru. I am not a mechanic. Uh, I do, I'm just a truck guy that loves trucks and I'm still learning about them as well myself. But I want to thank you guys for all tuning in today. I really, I really appreciate it. And again, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and hit that notification button. And uh, with that, we say God bless and safe travels.